When asked if any confidence was remaining for the miserable road warriors, Steph said, I mean, I still have it. Considering Steph put on one of the most mind-boggling 50 pieces of his entire career after just turning 35, yet the dubs took the L, this man evidently hasn't had nearly enough support in terms of the effort or desire to get it done from the pieces placed around him. The now having fallen back to number six seeded dubs have plummeted for a variety of reasons, stemming from quite frankly the chemistry being destroyed by Draymond, iHeart Podcast Radio MVP Green, who just got suspended for racking up his 16th technical foul. Before that, he punched the now overhated on JP, documented by Dre in a seemingly satirical yet awkwardly serious manner. As we've looked at before, cutting Mac McClung a day before the punch was no coincidence. Another standpoint on the waving of 2023's dunk contest champion is this. Considering the reputation of Bob Myers having made this the best front office for over a decade, no other organization was going to think twice about picking up Mac after he cleared waivers in October. Philly only signed him so he'd be eligible for the dunk contest, now he's back in the G. But it's not just that, the Warriors have the same damn road record as the Detroit Pistons. At 7-27 away from their fans in the Bay Area, Golden State ranks as just the 27th best road team. A clear contributor to that, you can just tell from their body language looking utterly different when they're in the Chase Center compared to when they're on the road. And of course, there's a completely different feel to attempting to win a road game compared to protecting home soil, but this team quite frankly doesn't box out when they leave the Bay Area, their lack of communication and upbeat nature is also underwhelming. You saw the Clippers, whose vibes aren't the best to begin with, completely outclass Golden State on their home floor. Embarrassing stuff for the dubs. Going back to the obvious pickup they should have made but didn't in the well-documented Mac McClung. Reason we talk about this kid so much on this channel is the fact that his confident persona rivaling fellow alpha males gets in the way of GMs taking a chance on him. Now that may sound flagrant, but there's quite frankly no other reason why Mac McClung doesn't own one of the NBA's 450 roster spots. His Gary Payton II type impact in terms of his scrappiness on both ends, with a more advanced ability than GP2 to create off the bounce, combined with his naive, desirable, and upbeat mentality would have fit in well Golden State would conversely make the safe choice by bringing in a guy who'd already experienced a year in the league and tied Jerome. Jerome can score, but his lateral quickness, natural grit, willingness to lay it out there, his hands to get deflections or knock the ball loose, or just his general body language and how he quite simply gets along with his teammates, which is a skill in itself, all don't compare to a player who should be in the pros in Mac. One seemingly small mistake can cost you amidst the life-or-death competitive nature in the association. A team requires the perfect mix of vibrant energy from their youth and nasty, hard-nosed, lead-by-example type aggression slash toughness from their vets. I'd go as far as to say, as crazy as it sounds, that the punch doesn't happen if McClung's on this roster, getting along with both Draymond and Poole, plus keeping the vibes right in general. Hindsight is 2020, and shoulda, coulda, woulda. However, it's not too late to own up to previous mistakes and actually bring back McClung. Now may be the best time for my guy Bob to make a bold decision to save this dynasty. If that means bringing in D-Flo to make these current takes private, then I'm all for it. Make me the assistant GM off the street like Peter Brand. Mac McClung was the extra ball handling threat this dubs team needed. And despite being known as a below average defender, his advanced stats in the G League defensively, specifically when the Delaware Bluecoats play in their home gym, stand out as more than solid. At Chase Fieldhouse, Max 106.4 defensive rating equates to what would be fifth best among all players across the G who've played at least 26 games. His defensive rating overall, including the road, is 111.7, which among all guards ranks him at a very decent 15th best. Now, is Mac an above average defender? Maybe, probably not, but his effort makes up for a lot, and it's a damn shame Steve Kerr never gave him minutes in the preseason because I think he could have helped this team's chemistry a lot. 
But speaking of players Kerr never gave a chance to, James Wiseman fit the Warriors' needs perfectly, a 7-foot center who could protect the rim and naturally grab boards. It's utterly idiotic and not creative at all from Steve Kerr that he never played lineups where James Wiseman had a chance to benefit off the passing chops and defense from Draymond. And look, I get there's a stigma behind two big lineups. No one wants to play them. It's the small ball era. But wasn't the entire point of drafting Wiseman second overall over LaMelo to give them the big they've always needed? Instead, Wiseman just sat on the bench, played with bench players when he did get a chance, killing his confidence and therefore his value. James deserved better from the first class organization, and as much as it pains me to say, the front office and coaching mistakes made most recently by Golden State is costing them their dynasty, granting them with the worst karma possible. Gary Payton II, I did have an entire video written about regarding his value. It sadly got lost in my documents and could have to be redone if GP2 is healthy, which reports indicate isn't the case based off how the brutal Portland training staff treated him, based off the seemingly hampered way in which Gary's looking and shoot around. Who knows if he'll be the same guy? But if the Warriors would have just committed to re-signing GP2, they would have never had to give up Wiseman. And this also goes back to the Mac, as if they just signed a similar guy to Gary and McClung, they could have kept the number two pick in that universe as well. That said, Stephen Curry is the greatest player on the face of planet Earth. When Draymond Green is properly motivated, which he hasn't been since the mistake not to sign or play McClung, Dre becomes the best defensive and most versatile big man across the association. I think Klay Thompson kind of plays for Dre, so when Dre's vibes are off, Klay's kind of broken as well. Championships don't occur though without Green. Same thing goes for the all-time sniper in Thompson. These three, however, and Curry, Thompson, and Green have been non-connected for the entire season. As Bay Area analyst Bonta Hill said recently, we're all blaming the young guys or the Ty Jerome and Anthony Lambs of the world when really a lot of the blame should be placed on the big three of Steph, Clay, and Dre, along with all of this team's vets. Kevon Looney has been an Iron Man all year, but simply hasn't been his same springy self. He's likely banged up. Biggest shame of this all is the Warriors have potentially wasted a prime season of Stephen Curry's career if others don't start listening and competing for their top player. Steph hasn't had the ear of his locker room for quite some time for whatever reason. Your play does the talking for you in the NBA, that goes without saying. Steph's been exceptional, so I have no idea why guys aren't listening to him. The lack of a favorable whistle for Steph is almost sickening as the man's got scratches all over his arm, constantly getting hacked, no call, yet is dead last by far among 30 point per game scores this year in free throws attempted. The disrespect Steph receives from the refs, he needs to use as motivation to translate into every aspect of the game. But right now, it's looking like my semi-prediction that the Dubs' fifth chip in under a decade will hit different is inaccurate. That's not to say it's wrong, but this certainly does not resemble the same monster that it was in 2022 in any sense. What's the biggest problem for the Dubs in your opinion though? Two commenter shoutouts next time for my last upload and this one. Peace.